small form factor rebuildable mouth to lung tanks. Now when I say small form factor, I don't mean small in height, I mean small in width. Back in 2013-2014 and for a big chunk of 2015, RTAs, mouth to lung RTAs, were nowhere near as big as the ones you're seeing now. With the advent of the K Fund coming out around about 2012, 2013, the direction of mouth to lung rebuildable started to shift away from thin form factor tanks to the more common 22, 24, or in some cases 26 millimeter diameter tanks. But there was a time when 16 millimeter, very thin, very thin. There was a time when 16 millimeter diameter mouth to lung RTAs were kind of commonplace. This is something I haven't seen for a very, very long time in the market. This is the YDDZ, the, the, the Yiddiz, Yiddiz, the YDDZ, it's an odd name for a company, I know, T1 MTL RTA. They could have come up with a better name for this tank, but they didn't. But this is the first true 16 millimeter diameter mouth to lung RTA I've seen on the market for a very, very long time. And there's going to be people out there that are going to be very interested in this because back in the days of 2014 and 2015, when these tanks were very commonplace, they were very small very thin mods and also rather high-end, small, thin side-by-side -side mods that were built for this style of tank, including the old 16 millimeter diameter Vision Spinner 1, Vision Spinner, it wasn't the 2 because the 2 was 18, Vision Spinner 3, and I think the Spinner 4? When was the last Vision Spinner release? I think the, the last Spinner release was the Vision Spinner 6. That was out in 2017. I think the Vision Spinner 5 was another was another 16mm diameter. I'll need to check that, actually. I'm sure it was Vision Spinner 5, but there will be people out there that are dedicated mouth-to-lung fans that will have a mod that would suit this little tank perfectly. But here's the question. With a tank this size... Does it mean that coiling on it and wicking on it becomes a royal pain in the rear end? And what's it like for flavour, considering the chamber in this thing is practically non-existent? Only one way to find out, but before we do find out, let's have an up close and personal and the tech specs for this tank review! Probably one of the most interesting mouth to lung tanks to arrive here for at least a couple of years just because of the size of it. It is a rarity to actually see mouth to lung tanks of this size, especially in the rebuildable market. This, this is going to be a good tank. We'll find out if it's a good tank, but if it does turn out to be a good tank, this is going to be a good tank for stealth vaping. Very good tank for stealth vaping. Starting at the top of the YDDZ T1 MTL RTA, 
They really could have come up with a better name than that. We have got the Drip Tip. The Drip Tip is a full 510 double o ringed on the Drip Tip, or the mouthpiece, sorry, that's included. Fill in the tank up is super easy. Unscrew the top. Then you've got a whole bunch of fill holes in there, as you can see. It comes with a polycarbonate tank section already attached. However, in the box, as you've seen the scroll by at the very beginning, in the box, there is a glass tank section with this. So you can pop a glass tank on it if you want. You've got the YDDZ logo there, and then there's basically nothing else around the entire tank. Down here at the bottom, you do, of course, have your airflow control. Very, very, very tight mouth to lung with that. Then it just slowly goes up, slowly goes up until you've got two massive holes here. Now, even with the two massive holes there, it's still a mouth to lung draw, folks. There is no way you're getting a direct to lung from this. No way at all. Down here at the base, don't vape in a bin, YDDZT1. And then you've got the serial number down there. Let's open this thing up and have a look inside. Now, because of the size of the tank, look at the size of that chamber. This is a tiny, tiny chamber with a pretty damn good finish on the upper end of the chamber as well. That is a really good finish on the upper side of the chamber, but this is a very, very small chamber, folks. Very small chamber. If we take this tank apart, actually, and have a look at how this has been constructed. So you've got the juice intakes that are going down past the chamber and then into the deck, but that is a very small chamber. There's high hopes for this tank. At least I had high hopes for this tank when I first got my hands on it, especially because of the size of it. But now, to now onto the important part the deck. Look at the size of that deck. Now, what YDDZ have decided to do with this is that they're not relying solely on bottom airflow with this. You've got the bottom airflow holes here that are going to be hitting the middle of the coil, obviously, but you've got this, which is angled side airflow because the air's going to be coming up round about this kind of angle here, round about a 45 degree angle. Now, most of the air will probably end up coming out of the side airflow with a little bit of air coming out from the underside. Two posts, as you can see, nothing fancy going on with the post system, and you've got two juice intakes on either side of the deck. Let's pop a coil in this. Now, I was going to pop in... Um, where is my Steve Delegaff portal? There it is. I was going to pop in. Is that too close? No, it's not. I was going to pop in uh, a mouth-to-lung alien coil, that proper coil sent in. But then I realised this deck is too small. And I need to clean the top of this. Hold on. <laughs> There's bits of juice and bits of cotton all over this thing. Hold on. Let's find... Let's find another Steve Dilligaff Portarati stand, which isn't a mess. I should really clean my arty stands more often in here. There we go. Pop it on there. So I was going to pop a, a proper coils alien in this, but because of the size of the tank, very, very thin, there's not a lot of metal to grab onto the heat that the coil is making and pull that heat out and basically, you know, get rid of it in the air. So I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to use a micro coil with this instead. And I've lost the damn screwdriver. There it is. Not going to bother speeding this up either, folks, because it's a dual post micro coil affair. It's not as if it's going to take too long. So we're going to just unscrew that. Then we're going to head up to the camera, lock off the focus. That's the wrong one I'm doing. It's the, where the hell is the focus switch? Nope. It's the other one. I'm still getting I'm still getting used to this new lens. There we go. That's the focus locked off. Now let's just move that focus in a little bit better. There we go. So, nothing fancy, folks. Simple, plain, 8-wrap, 27-gauge, which is roughly 0.35mm, Canthal A1. So, this will come out at round about 0.91ohm, round about the 1ohm mark. And these legs are way too long. It's been a long time since I've dealt with a micro coil. Normally I just cheat and put a custom made, custom made um, low density complex coils in from proper coils, but I thought, no, nah, I'm not gonna risk a, a I'm not gonna risk even a, a, a low grade complex coil with this deck because this is a tiny tank. 
It's a tiny tank, so I thought, you know what, play it safe. We'll pop in a micro coil. Just use your fingernail to hold the coil in place. And if you're feeling the coil move around as you're screwing things down, don't worry, we can fix that once the coil is actually screwed in. So that goes in there. That goes in there. Just screw it down as much as you can. Don't over tighten it, obviously. There we go. Coil's a mess, don't worry, we can fix that later on. Get in with the snips, cut these two down. Where the hell is it? There it is. Right there, and then right there. Now, we get in with the coil master, and we just pop it in like that, give it a wiggle, then we slowly ease that coil round, and we want that coil to be in line with that side airflow that you're seeing there, right? So what we want to do, we want to pull this coil out a bit so it's more centered and more over the bottom airflow. And then we want to give it a nudge over to the side, pull it out a bit more. That should do it. That looks good to me. There we go, that looks good to me. So you'll notice, in fact, you might need to push it down a bit actually, hold on. Give it just a quick nudge down. How's that? There, yeah, that's more like it. There we go. Now it's lined up with the side airflow. You'll notice there is a pretty large gap between the base of the coil, uh, between the base of the coil and um, the bottom airflow. But again, this tank is mainly relying on this airflow here. Now what we need to do is pop this off. And we will bring out something that I haven't used for a while because I haven't brought a mod with me. That's the Red Stag DNA, DNA 200. This needs a clean as well. Build station. Not at 37 watts because I don't want to weld the coil. Let's switch autofocus back on. Again, wrong bloody switch. Where is it? Is it round there? And that used to the older, and that used to the uh, the older Canon lenses. They've switched the switch positions over. There we go. Right, let's drop this down. 16 watts will do. We're just going to slowly pulse this in because again, it's a micro coil. You don't want to you don't want to just go straight for a red. You want to actually pulse it. Otherwise, the coil will end up deforming on you. Give it a rake. Give it another rake. Okay, it came out a little bit higher than I thought it would. 1.3, but then again, I haven't dealt with micro coils for a long time. Generally speaking, um, eight wraps, eight wraps at 26, 27, 28 gauge um, on the on the 2.5 millimeter coil master will generally get you over one ohm. So we're going to take this off here now, and then we're going to wick this. Now wicking this is going to be interesting because the deck size is very very small, very small, and the juice intakes are tiny as well. So. You don't want to go overboard with the wicking on this, otherwise you're basically going to strangle the thing out. And because you're dealing with such a small space in the deck, and I've left my cotton over on the other desk, because you're dealing with such a small space on the deck, if you choke this out, you will get a dry hit within two draws, right? So you've got to be very careful with how you wick this thing. Here's the way I've been doing it. Again, Cotton Gods Cotton, not a sponsor. I just like using Cotton Gods for tanks. We're going to peel off 2.5 millimeter inner diameter, so we don't need too much cotton here. Peel off a little bit. Give it a very, very rough roll. Pinch and twist one end. Feed that through. And what we want here is we want enough cotton to butt up against this. But again, you don't want to cram the cotton in. We want the cotton to work with us here. So I'm gonna get my scissors out and I'm gonna cut this cotton level with the outside of that ring that you're seeing there. Level, directly level with it. So I'm gonna get my scissors and I'm gonna snip that there. 
Same with the other side, I'm going to snip that level with the ring. And then I'm going to go in with the tweezers and I am going to rake out all of the loose strands just to thin things out a bit more. And what you end up with is the classic bow tie look, which is what we're getting now. So let's head in here, clean that up, clean that up. And what we want to do, let's zoom this all the way down so you can see what the hell I'm doing. You're seeing that the end of the cotton is roughly level with the edge. We just want to push the cotton in, same trick as always, pushing the cotton in towards the coil and letting the cotton itself find its way down into the deck. Same with the opposite side, pushing the cotton in towards the coil and letting the cotton find its own way down into the deck. Because trust me, if you overwick this, you will you will almost instantly get a dry hit. Because look at it, there's very little cotton in there. Very little cotton. So the one problem with tanks of this size, and it's one of the reasons you don't generally tend to see tanks of this size anymore, is the wicking can sometimes be a royal pain in the rear end. Let's just push that cotton in. Same with the outside, just to tidy it up. And what you'll end up with, folks, is something that looks like that. Classic bow tie, but you're seeing that? Cotton's covering the end, cotton's covering the end, but you haven't forced the cotton down, which means you haven't compressed the cotton up against the juice intake, which means that will just happily wick away like anything. And there we go, folks. That was the YDDZ T1 MTL RTA. Really, they could have thought of a better name than that. Let's pop the top of this tank back on. Pull the tank off. Tiny, tiny little wee buildable. Let's head back up to the main cam. And we're back up top with the YDDZ. Got it sitting on the Aspire and Sunbox mixing. It, it looks tiny on this mod. Anyway, running this at 20 watts, airflow control is on the two middle holes, and we're off. Wow, that flavour. And there we go, that was the YDDZ T1 MTL RTA. They should have really thought of a better name. Uh, what do I think about the eyes and the nose? Mm. Now, this is a rarity in the mouth to lung market, especially now, especially now, because while it is true that a lot of mouth to lung tanks are going down the road, like the Berserkers, for instance, they're going down the road of smaller form factor tanks. When they go small, they generally go down to 22 millimeters and let and shorten the height, or they stick with 24 millimeters and bring the height down even more. This is a rarity. This is a big rarity. And I can kind of see why YDDZ decided to come out with a tank like this. Because think about it. When was the last time you seen a 16 millimeter small form factor mouth to lung tank released onto the market? Over the past two years, I can count them on one hand. And even then, it would only take up about two fingers because the market has shifted a well, well away from the old days of 2013 and 2014 when these tanks were much more commonplace. And the big problem, the big problem with the older 16 millimeter diameter form factor MTL tanks was one of heat. Even with a micro coil sitting in here, which generally does, oh, almost dropped my mod there, which generally doesn't tend to produce as much heat as a complex mouth-to-lung coil. Even with this little mouth-to-lung coil sitting in here, that's simple round wire, this tank heats up quite a bit. Quite a bit, for even for a tiny micro coil wrap, and that was one of the major downsides when it came to the 16 millimeter form factor tanks. Now, I will give YDDZ their due. Down here at the base of the tank, there is a fair amount of metal down here. 
comparing it to the older 16mm tanks, which didn't seem to have a lot of metal at the base to draw the heat away from the deck. So they have tried to fit a little bit more metal. That's why when you get this tank, it's for its size, it's fairly heavy. For its size, it's fairly heavy, but you will notice that the, the base of this tank will heat up quite a bit especially if you're chain vaping on it and that's one of the reasons why it's always recommended with a small form factor tank like this to screw it on to a nice big metal plate or a tube mod there is some 16 millimeter form factor lipo like inbuilt lipo basically cylindrical mods out there that would fit this that would fit this perfectly but yeah it heats up it definitely heats up And that's about the only negative point I've got with this. And it's a negative point which plagues small form factor tanks, even to this day. The good points with this. Now, the chamber, and you've seen the chamber down on the table cam. The chamber for this tank is tiny, which is to be expected for a 16mm form factor tank. With that smaller chamber, it does lessen, it does lessen the types of coil you could put in here. If you do know a builder that does make two or 2.5 millimeter medium or low density complex coils like a mouth to lung Clapton or a mouth to lung Fuse Clapton, I wouldn't go down the road of mouth to lung Alien because it probably wouldn't fit on this. What you'll find is if you put a mouth to lung Clapton or a mouth to lung Fuse Clapton in here, the flavor will increase by a little bit compared to a simple round wire wrap that I've got in here. But like I said at the beginning of this section, it'll heat up even more because the more wire density you've got, the more heat gets produced, but you will get better flavor. As for the flavor of this, it's good. There's no getting around it, it's good. And most, in fact not most, basically all of the mainstream mouth to lung tanks on the market the chambers in them, even for the smaller tanks in the Berserker range, the chambers are basically double the size of the chamber that's in here. The flavour that's coming out of this is very, very concentrated flavour. Mm. Very concentrated flavour. It is going to be up there. This little tank is going to be up there somewhere in the top five somewhere in the top five when it gets to the end of this year and I'm doing the best of 2020 because I don't think there's going to be another 16 millimeter RTA for the mouth to lung market being released this year because this is a form factor in size that a lot of the bigger companies like Geek Vape uh, and other companies that make mouth to lung tanks, they don't want to go down this road because this road, you're kind of you're kind of moving away from the mainstream if you go down this form factor of mouth to lung tank. But I know where this is aimed at. This is aimed at all those older mouth to lung vapors that, 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 that have been mouth to lung vaping since about 2013 and 2014. And they have the mods that this would fit onto and actually match up pretty well. For the mouth to lung market that kind of came back at the end of 2016, going into 2017 with the likes of the Berserker range from Alex from Vapors MD. Those mouth to lung vapors that bought mods to match up to the 22 and 24 millimeter tanks, they won't have anything that this would match up to because the damn tank is too small. They're gonna have to go down the road of a vision spinner or something or something similar to that ilk. But for the people that mouth to lung vaped in 2013 and 2014, when these little fellas were much more commonplace, you've probably got something in your cupboard that would match up to this tank. I mean, even on the mix, even on the mix, this just doesn't look right sitting on this. There's a huge gap around the side there and it just doesn't look right, but it works. Mm. And the flavor for a simple round wire coil, the flavor's phenomenal from this thing. Now, I'm sure I've got a 16 millimeter vision spinner sitting up at the house. I know I've got an 18 millimeter spinner too, but I'm sure I've got a 16, no, 
Uh, it was not. The 18 millimeter, that was the spinner one. I'm sure there was a 16 millimeter vision spinner. It might have been the Mark II or the Mark III. I'm sure I've got one in the house. Mm, I should have bought it down with me, actually. But there we go. That was the YDDZ T1 MTL RTA. Again, if you're watching this YDDZ, you need to come up with better names for your tank because that doesn't really roll off the tongue. All in all, folks, if you are into the small form factor and more especially stealth vape form factors, you probably want to get you probably want to get your hands on this now. Again, it is a very small deck. You will be limited to the size of the coil that you put in. But if you can get your hands on a coil melt, but a coil builder that can make a two millimeter diameter inner diameter. We're talking about a two millimeter Clapton or fuse Clapton, low density, high ohms. Oh, pop it in this tank. You're going to get flavour for days. Big thanks. To the folks at YDDZ for sending it over for a review. If you thought this review sucked, you know what to do. Down below. Give a thumbs up. Very first at the top, you've got the latest video. No matter what video you're watching in the channel. I mean, that's latest What's Up Sunday update vlog in the middle. Shout out to the patrons, the subscribe stars, and the YouTube members for support VipVic financially. And underneath me is the VipVic logo. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching and have a good one.